the final topic for Einstein discovery is how do we know which store to deploy and what if my outcome isn't a number? We recognize that not every business problem concerns a continuous outcome variable. A lot of times you want to know if something will happen. For these use cases, we use a modeling technique called logistic regression. If we consider this example here, we have hours studying on the x-axis, likelihood of passing the exam on the y. So all the points are at the 1 or at the 0. And you can see that as you study more, you're more likely to have passed the exam. Unless, obviously, your parents are rich and paid for someone else to take the exam for you, in which case there would be points at the top left of this chart. If we were to use linear regression for this use case, we'd end up with predictions that say something like, if you were to study for five hours, there's a 110% chance of passing the exam. While it might sound great when you tell your boss that you give 110% effort, it's mathematically impossible. You can't give more than 100%, and you can't give less than 0%. So the outcome of this model should be between 0 and 1. And you can see that that's what logistic regression does. As you study more hours, there's a point of diminishing returns where it levels off, and it will never exceed 1. And towards the left, if you study less, it can never go below 0. If you select a binary outcome in Einstein discovery, logistic regression is turned on automatically. For this hands-on exercise, we're going to predict the likelihood of winning a sales opportunity. Obviously, this use case is either true-false. Either we won it or we didn't. We have some data that's in Salesforce, some data that's elsewhere. We don't know which data is useful for the story. And if we decide to deploy these predictions, we want to deploy the best possible predictions. Our base data set is called ED Opportunities, and it's already in Einstein Analytics. So if we select ED Opportunities, and go to Create Story. You'll see by default, Einstein Discovery wants to maximize amount because it shows the first possible outcome variable. But that's not what we want to do. We want to maximize is one true. Note that maximizing is one true is mathematically identical to minimizing is one false. It just makes a lot more sense interpreting insights as increasing the likelihood of winning the opportunity versus decreasing the likelihood of losing it. So we will choose maximize is one true. In data options, you'll see that now we have a numerical input variable. In a previous video, we covered how we handle these. If you click on it and go into advanced options, you'll see number of categories is 10. This is where the deciling occurs. If you wanted VIG and tiles or something else, you can choose other quantiles, but deciling is a pretty good starting point. You can also tell it to bin by equal numeric width. If you have age in your data set, for example, and 10% of your customers are 18, and 10% are 19, and 10% are 20 to 29, you don't want one bar for 18-year-olds, one bar for 19-year-olds, and one bar for everyone in their 20s. So that's a case where you might want equal numeric width. But you should keep in mind that if you do that, the bars will have different counts. If we review settings and create the story, Einstein Discovery will help us understand what leads to winning opportunities. When the story completes, the first insight Einstein Discovery presents is that region explains 2.1% of the variation and is one true. This is actually a very good looking chart from a business perspective because my leftmost bar, Germany, is actually my highest bar. So that tells me that Germany is a key driver of my company's success. I have more opportunities there than anywhere else and they're winning at really high rates. France is my second most populous region and it appears to be performing poorly, but the fact that it's a gray bar tells me it's nothing I should be concerned about. France is actually performing just like the rest of my business. There's nothing remarkable about it. However, Latin America is also performing well. If I want to know more about what's going on in Germany, I can go to the description first. It tells me Germany is 11.23% above average. The result may have been improved by competitors Ecosoft. A quick business takeaway from this kind of insight is if I want to understand how to compete against Ecosoft, I should probably ask Germany what they're doing, because they appear to have figured out how to compete against Ecosoft really well. If I want to go deeper, I can ask why it happened for Germany. And you'll actually see that this comes up first automatically, because Einstein Discovery knows that this is an important insight that we'll want to look at. Just as with previous why it happened charts, it starts with the global average and ends at how Germany is performing. And you can see here that the impact for Germany is a positive too. So that tells me that region is Germany is having a positive impact on the performance in that region just by itself. Here we see competitor is Ecosoft and region is Germany. What this term tells me is as we saw in the description before, Germany is doing well against Ecosoft. And if I look in the description, it says competitor is Ecosoft occurs 36% of the time globally, but changes to 43% when it's known that region is Germany. Because of these cases, is one true increases by 2.3. So they're doing well against Ecosoft and competing against them more often, and that's driving up their average. 
product name is Call Center and region is Germany. So apparently Germany is also doing well selling our call center products. As we saw before, there's a large impact here from small terms, but the thing you should keep in mind is that there are 60 terms combined in this bar. So none of these effects are any larger than this 0.8 here. There's just a lot of them being combined. Here's a term for promotion is none. The impact here is 0.98, and the description tells us that promotion is none occurs 34.4% of the time globally, but changes to 39.5% when it's known that region is Germany. Because of these cases, the percent of wins increased by 0.981. You can also see in the tooltip that there's a positive coefficient here. So what this suggests to me is that promotion is none is having a positive impact, and Germany has picked up on this and is doing other promotions less often. They're not doing any promotions at all more often. This sounds like a counterintuitive insight, because we would expect that when we use a promotion, that increases the win rate, and not using a promotion would actually decrease it. So what might be going on here? What if the only time we use promotions are when we think we're going to lose the opportunity, or we only use them selectively on inherently difficult opportunities? Then what this would be alerting us to is correlation and not causation. To dig deeper into this, what you should do is reach out to the marketing team and understand if there is a rule system by which they apply the promotions. And if there is, you can bring in information from that to tease out that effect. Einstein Discovery would then be able to say if promotions had a positive impact when they're applied, independent of the difficulty of the opportunity. In this chart, you see that there's an unexplained term of minus 2.2. This seems relatively large compared to some of the others, but the thing you have to realize is this is actually a very difficult use case. A purchasing decision is entirely human-driven, and the reality is we just don't have enough information to understand human behavior perfectly. So with the variables we have, it's almost expected that the model would miss by a bit. And as I mentioned earlier, because our models won't overfit, this is almost a natural result of trying to create good predictions. If our model was able to capture the behavior of every subgroup perfectly and we never had any unexplained terms, that would be overfitting. So let's go back to the rest of the story. Here's region when competitor is Acme. You'll see that several of these bars are blue, but not all of them. So the left bars are when the region is competing against Acme, the right bars are when the region is competing against any other competitor. And specifically in France, Southeast Asia, and Brazil, our sales teams do better against Acme. The key takeaway here could be that if you're creating training materials for new hires, and you're creating a section on how to compete against Acme, reach out to your sales teams in France, Brazil, and Southeast Asia because apparently they're doing well against Acme. Similarly, if you're trying to learn how to compete against Big Mountain, India, Southeast Asia, and Japan are doing well against them. One of the next insights is competitor, and this is actually a very poor chart, because we see that we're competing against blue sky most often, but we have the lowest win rate against them. This is the value of ranking these bars by frequency. You can very quickly see, towards the left of the chart, where you can have the biggest impact on your business. So with this use case, we have our first story. We have some other fields that are somewhere else that we could bring in to try to augment this. So let's do that now. If we go back to data sets, We have this ED Opportunity Additional data set that contains three other fields. It has Account Executive, Management Consulting Share, and something called V-Code. We're going to start with ED Opportunities, and we're going to create a recipe. We're going to call it ED Opportunities Appended. and we're going to add data. The data comes from ED Opportunities Additional. And we want to bring in the three additional fields that we have. Click Done. Create the data set and uncheck the redundant opportunity ID. run the recipe this time only. Just as before, we can go to Data Manager and monitor the status of this process. And then when you come back to Analytics Studio, if you click back to Stories and then Data Sets, you'll see we have ED Opportunities appended as a new data set. Let's create a story from this one. Note that it's still trying to maximize amount by default, so make sure you select the correct outcome here again. Mm. 
One thing you might have noticed when you ran this analysis is that it took considerably longer to run. Now adding three fields to an analysis will increase the runtime a little bit because in Einstein Discovery we're not just adding three fields, we're also looking at all of the interactions between those three fields and all the other fields. So we're actually adding thousands of additional places to look. But it shouldn't increase the runtime the amount that we observed. So hint number one that something might be wrong in an analysis is if you make minor changes and observe drastic changes in how long it takes for the analysis to complete. The reason I bring this up is that when you see this happen in the real world, spend additional time going through the story to figure out what might be wrong. The first insight here is still region explains 2.1% of the variation and is one true. What that tells me is that when we added those three fields, none of those three fields were more powerful than the fields that we already had, or at least were not more powerful than region. We still see that Germany is being impacted by Ecosoft, so we didn't add any other variables that helped explain Germany's performance any better. If we go to why it happened, things have started to change, though. In particular, if we look at region as Germany, now it's saying the effect is minus 3.6. Previously, it said Germany had a positive impact of 2. Now, when you add additional variables to a statistical model, if those variables are able to better explain an effect that's in the data than what you had originally, effects can change. So it's not impossible that adding these other variables can cause the, the effect for Germany to change as it did. But when there are large shifts like this, it's just another signal that you should be looking more closely at the analysis. If we go deeper into the insights, we still see Acme by region, Big Mountain by region, product name is call center by region. But now we have account executive explains 2% of the variation is one true. This is a very fantastic looking chart to me because you can see the leftmost five bars are all above average and statistically significant. That tells me we have a certain handful of account executives that are doing really well and they're handling a lot of opportunities. You can see Mackenzie McLaughlin is 12.1% above average, and the result may have been worsened by amount is 3,000 to 399,000. So apparently she's doing really well, but she's not doing well for deals in, in certain amounts. So let's go deeper into why Mackenzie's performing so well. So we can ask why it happened for Mackenzie. What this chart suggests to me is that a large part of why Mackenzie's performing so well is just that it's Mackenzie. You can see the effect for her is 19%. You can see she doesn't do well with deals that are 43 to 71,000. She doesn't do well when the amount's, you know, typically less than 22,000. And when management consulting share is zero, Mackenzie doesn't do well either. So there's a few cases where she doesn't do particularly well, but a large proportion of why she does so well is just because she is who she is. So she appears to be a good account executive. Key takeaway from this is if you're creating new training materials, perhaps reach out to Mackenzie McLaughlin to learn from her experience. If we look at other confounding effects, we see competitors Ecosoft and region is Germany, and then region is Germany. The interesting thing here is region is Germany occurs 18% of the time globally, but changes to 100% when it's known that account executive is Mackenzie McLaughlin. What this suggests to me is that Mackenzie only works in the region of Germany. Now, one of the great things about being paired with Einstein Analytics is that we can go back to Analytics Studio and take a closer look at this data. So if I create a lens from this and I create a bar for account executive broken apart by region, what I'll see is that every account executive only works in one region. The reverse isn't true. Each region will have multiple account execs. But the fact that there's this relationship between the two tells me that I've introduced a problem into my analysis. It's called multicollinearity. So previously, the regions were absorbing the effects of the account executives, because each account executive only worked in one region. And now I've introduced the account executive variable, which has taken away the effects from the region and attributed it to the account executives. But ultimately, the account executives and the regions are still in the same analysis. So that can create problems in the statistical model. But let's continue going through the story. Here's an example of why Einstein discovery limits the number of categories in a variable. In this case, we have less than 100 bars, but it's to the point where if we were to try to look at some of these bars, the smallest mouse movement will take us off them, and they're hard to see.
as we go through the story, we come across these cases where it's calling our attention to specific V codes. In this case, when V code is met, data's March does worse. Imagine going to your boss or some other executive and saying, hey, in March, the V code is met isn't doing as well. Your boss may be able to infer what V code is met it really is, but for some of the more cryptic ones, chances are he or she won't. Let this be an example of why coded fields have no place in Einstein discovery. It just obscures the insights and makes it so that only the people that know the decodes can actually understand what discovery is telling them. And on that topic, when you get far enough into the story, we see that V-code explains 0.6% of the variation in is one true. Now, this is a nice looking chart because V-code is CP, we're doing really well. We're not doing well in the V-code PSEC, but I don't know what any of those mean because I don't know what these codes are. So all of these insights here are obscured to me. If I go a little bit further, I see vertical explains 0.6% of the variation in is one true and I have consumer products and public sector. So I had V-code explaining 0.6%, vertical explaining 0.6%. So I have redundant insights. You can see here that I've actually brought in the coded field and its decode. So before I had region followed by account exec. Now I have V-code followed by vertical. When you have similar variables in an analysis, there will be redundant insights close to each other in the story. Because if region matters, account exec matters, and if vcode matters, vertical also matters. So you'll see these insights ultimately twice. But the problems run deeper. If I were to ask for a prediction, and I specify an opportunity, If you look here, I have vertical as consumer products and V-code as CP, and they have about the same effect, minus 0.35 and minus 0.31. The reason the story took so long to run is because of the ridge regression approach that we take. Remember, we're playing whack-a-mole here, and we have two moles of identical strength. In fact, they're identical moles. So when we hit one with a hammer, the other one comes up to take its place. And when we go hit that one with the hammer, the first one comes up to take its place. The model is essentially fighting with itself to figure out where to put the effect, and it settles on basically splitting the effect between the two. Now, this doesn't sound like it's a problem, but if you were to come to me in a marketing application and say, hey, Randy, how much more valuable is a customer in Chicago on average? And I look at the model and I say the coefficient's five, and I'd say a customer in Chicago is worth five more dollars. But the reality is if I also had state in my analysis and the coefficient for the state of Illinois is five, Really, customers in Chicago are worth $10 more because Chicago is in Illinois, so I have to apply both coefficients. So it ruins my ability to ultimately interpret the effect of these variables. Now, wouldn't it be great if Einstein Discovery just alerted you to these kind of problems to begin with? That's what we have this improvements button for. If we click improvements, we see V code and vertical are exactly the same. Region and account executive are 99.9% .9 similar and explain similar variation. It's also calling our attention to amount and promotion. If you remember before, we saw that when promotion was none, we had a positive coefficient. Now this is suggesting to me that maybe we only use promotions on larger deal opportunities, which might explain why they have lower win rates when we use promotions. So Einstein Discovery's improvement system will call your attention to these kinds of problems. Now the important thing to note here is that you should not unilaterally take the recommendations of an artificial intelligence system. That's how you get Skynet. So apply your business expertise and figure out what you should do here. I'm going to leave account and promotion in the analysis. I'm going to drop V code and retain vertical. And I'm going to keep region. And I'm going to create a new story. All right, so now we have a new story. We've dropped V code. We've figured out if we want region or account exec. Um, and you may have chosen to do something different with amount and promotion. But now we have multiple stories. We have the first pass that was a pretty good story. And we have this pass that's also a pretty good story. The question now is how do we determine which one to actually deploy? And that's where we can talk about fit statistics.